In the custom bike frame building world, the bar has been set so high with regard to the quality of TIG welding. It's hard tubing to weld generally because the wall is thin, and so practice is essential, and I want to go over my favorite way to do the bulk of that practice. If you want to get good, real good at welding bike frames, you're just going to need to weld a lot of bike frames. But that's not always the most appropriate way to practice in every instance. <clears throat> if you're not that good at welding, period, welding bike frames might be a waste of your time because you'll put a lot of money and time into getting the materials for the frame and mitering them to fit together and then your welds will be total garbage. I know mine were in the beginning. It's a hard thing to get good at and I think it's good to drill the practice joints themselves for a while before you start making whole bike frames. Also, let's say you're trying new pulse settings, new welder setup, different kind of filler rod. You maybe don't want to put that right away into the bike frame. You want to do that in a practice joint first so that you can you can get real comfortable and familiar with it in a low stakes way, which is a couple dollars into a practice joint. Try it, get familiar with it, then put it into your bike frame. I'm talking about doing little joints like this, and and this is just a piece of head tube scrap and some some other tubing scrap. Miter them to fit, and then just test weld them up. They're not perfect, but it was really good. I you know every time you do it, you get a little more familiar. So I, I gather up my scrap tubing. This is stuff I was doing test bends on. Whatever it is, maybe these are the drop cuts at the end of your frame tubing. Whatever it is, little scraps that I can't. They're not long enough to use for anything else. And then I'm gonna machine miter them on my milling machine because I have one. You could also do that with a hacksaw and hand files and I'll, I'll cover that in the future but for right now we're just going to use the milling machine. It's a good quick way to get a bunch of cuts and then I need to deburr that, prep it for welding and weld them up. So this is what I'm going to use to hold the tubes for mitering. This is the prototype for the Miter Daddy. This will be on sale uh, in a couple weeks and it's just uh, it holds main tubes for mitering of different sizes whether they're round or shaped, tapered or straight. Uh, pretty much all main tubes will fit into this. So here's a scrap that I have. It's got a little bend at the end. We're just going to put it in the milling machine vise here. Now if I want to set it to a specific cut angle I just use this digital angle gauge. That'd be 13.6. Can set it to whatever I want. I like to do a variety of angles. So a 90 degree joint is gonna be the easiest to weld. If I do something more like a 60 or a 45, that gets to be harder to get on the inside. And so that's good to practice sometimes too. I like to do a variety of angles. Now I need to get on the tubing center line. I designed this tool to be three inches wide, so I'm gonna to touch off my edge finder on this side, and then I'll move over an inch and a half, and I know that I'll be on the tubing center line. This is an inch and a quarter tube, and I'm gonna miter it to fit up against the inch and three eighths tube, so I need an inch and three eighths hole saw. I've got a Paragon Machine Works Arbor with a three quarter inch shank and then this here is just a Lennox bimetal hole saw. So I got the tubing tight in the miter daddy, I got the vise tight, I got the table locked and now I'm ready to make my cut. mitered all of those joints and now I have uh, a sample, a collection here of different tubes that are ready for welding. I also deburred these and cleaned these on, uh, on my belt sander and there will be a video coming out about how I like to do that with all the steps involved. But uh, these fit together nicely and they're ready to go and I got a bunch of them so I can sit down and do a couple, put the rest in the drawer, come back to it the next day, do a couple, that sort of thing. I get all the work done of preparing them in a batch so that then I can just work the practice in. Whenever I get a chance it makes it easy for me to regularly practice so that I can get a lot of growth 
over you know every every day or every couple days. So I'm about ready to weld these together and the whole point of this is just to get more experience, more comfort, more familiarity and so what I'll do is I'll first of all I'm just gonna hold these together I don't have a slick fixture so I'll use my left hand my non-torch hand to hold them together and then I'll use my right hand with this and I'll just do a little fusion tack flip it over do a fusion tack I'm just fusing the two metals together because I don't have a third hand to come in with a filler rod and with those little fusion tacks they're not that strong yet and so before I start actually earnestly welding I'll do like a real tack with some filler and then when I have two little fusion tacks and maybe two filler tacks or something like that, then I'll start actually welding it out. But the whole point of this is uh, basically you, you want to practice maybe try new things or just try and get comfortable at all if you're new to this and then assess, you know, think about what worked and what didn't. How can you do it better? Maybe you notice that you're just dipping your electrode all the time. Well, then you really need to focus on that one thing and drill it. Maybe you're noticing that you're getting, uh, as you dip the filler rod into the puddle, you're getting hung up because the, the filler rod wants to freeze in the edge of the puddle and you get stuck. You know, whatever it is, try and really think critically. Maybe you're undercutting the weld or maybe your starts and stops are not that clean. Maybe you're having a hard time following right along that line of the miter. You know, you want to stay right centered along that miter. And so whatever it is, just always think critically. You know, this is, a, this is an opportunity for you to fail with no consequences. You can make a terrible weld. And so it's, it's really about just trying to grow. It's not about doing your best work every time. It's about growing so that you can learn the most and I think it's really important to think critically before during and after the welds and assessing what went well and what didn't and then correcting from there it's different than when you're welding out the full bike frame and take advantage of that difference because this allows you to do different kinds of growth and, and it, it's not the same as welding out a full bike frame but in some ways it's actually better practice all right so here's some fusion tacks So that first fusion tack is not going to hold very strong and I'm going to be ginger with this and like usual when you tack on one side it wants to spread the tubing apart so I'm going to push it together and get another tack. So I'm just going to do a little attack now with some filler so it'll hold better when I go to actually weld. There's a little bit of oxidation on the end of this rod and it's stainless, this is 880T, and sometimes you get a little uh, BB on the end of that, and so I'll just be snipping these off all the time so that I have a clean end of my filler rod to work with. I did two fusion tacks, then I did some filler tacks. This is fairly well held together now, the welds that I do over here, for instance, aren't going to break these actual filler tacks and I can actually go to town welding this baby up. So if you weld, this is the best part. You've done all the prep, you've cleaned everything, you got it ready. And this is not even stressful because this isn't going into a finished bike. You just get to zone in, you get that quality hood time, the practice. It's, you know, everything that's going to happen is going to happen right now. So I'm just going to flip it down. I'm going to lay some beads. I love this stuff. You know, I'm, I'm learning all the time and assessing. I'm looking at it. You know, maybe it's a little bit undercut, maybe this or that, whatever it is. I think about it and then I apply those lessons. I try and do better on the next one. And this is just a great way to drill it. You know, once you get this uh, stuff all prepped and it's sitting in a drawer, you can do a, a practice joint like this in 10 minutes or less. And uh, it's a really good way to work that into a daily or, you know, once a week routine that over time really makes you, you know, help you get to that next level. Hope you found the video useful useful, hit that subscribe button, the red one, it says subscribe on it, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video.